Greetings gamers and welcome to a very spooky video here on the LaserCorn channel. Today we are running down my top five favorite spooky games for the Halloween season. And uh, keep in mind this is just my favorites. It's not the best games of all time. If you disagree you can leave it in the comments. But you know I've never done this top five before so I figure yeah let's get in there. Let's talk about scary games. <laughs> Now, creeping its way into the number five spot is Outlast. It's a game where you're a reporter investigating a mental asylum, a situation that can't possibly result in anything spooky happening. Now, I played this game way back in the backseat gaming days of Smosh Games, and it's pretty creepy. You're a reporter armed only with a camera, and you have to navigate this maze-like mental asylum with all these mental patients trying to hunt you down and bash your brains. And some of them are just sitting there creepily, and they're just crazy talking to themselves. But others are really, really aggressive and mean. I remember we were hiding in a locker, hoping this guy with a bat didn't open the locker and check it in and bash our brains in. It was very spooky. And there were a few parts that, like, stuck with me long after the game ended. Uh, the nude guy part was nuts. Literally, you could see his nuts, and he was chasing you around, and he's all naked and creepy and you just wanted to get away from that naked man. Yeah, no me gusta creepy naked guy. Also the elevator scene, Jesus! The elevator scene, now I'm having flashbacks. Let's move on. Spooking its way into the number four spot on my list is The Evil Within 2. Uh, this game, the boss fights are really what made this game. They were just out of this world. You start off pretty much fighting a multi-headed buzzsaw monster and it just gets weirder from there. You've got your camera monsters, your safe face monsters. This game has some of the most imaginative enemy design I've ever seen. Plus the weapons in this game felt really good, especially the different kinds of arrows. I remember the fire arrow into the oil slick to light up that very first monster was a gratifying feeling. It was just a really fun game and I liked the way they worked stealth into it. And the fact that you could be stealthy and sneak up on some of the monsters and do like stealth kills on them. It was almost a mix of horror and Assassin's Creed. It was great. But sometimes you would sneak up on a monster and try and kill it and then it would be a stronger monster than you thought. And then it would just turn around and be like, now you've made me angry. Uh, so yeah, a lot of great moments playing that game. I should go back and replay it this Halloween season. Scraping its way into the number three spot is the game Clock Tower. And man, uh, Scissor Man is just one of the scariest villains of all time. I mean, you've got games like Resident Evil, okay? Resident Evil's got Nemesis and Mr. X, and those are huge towering monstrosities. One of them has a rocket launcher, and they, they hunt you relentlessly, but they're big imposing dudes that scare you. Scissor Man was this little hobbled over guy with this giant pair of scissors that would hop around horrifyingly. God, that the way he moves around the map was just the scariest part of the game. And oh my God, you'd be hiding in a bathroom stall and the game had this weird like coin flip system. So if you went into a bathroom stall to hide, uh, he might just he might just look around and then kind of hobble out of the door, or he might stab you right through the right through the stall door and kill you. It was just a it was just a crazy intense game. So much suspense waiting to find out if Scissor Man was gonna kill you or not. And he was just he's just one of the best baddies of all time. I love him. I love him. I, big ups for short baddies for doing it without the towering seven foot height. Love that. And mutating its way into the number two spot on this list is a game that took horror to infinity and beyond. I'm talking space. Dead space. Not, not some sort of horror game set in the Toy Story universe. I know I said infinity and beyond there. Although, hang on, just a second. Give me just a second here. Toy Story horror game might not be such a bad idea. Anyway, let's talk about Dead Space and specifically Dead Space 2. Uh, that's the first game I played in the series, so uh, that's the one that stuck with me the most. Again, this is my list of top five. Uh, I know a lot of people would probably say one is better, but I really like two. This was the first game that really made me come to terms with the fact that I'm very reliant on headshots. If you make me think about enemies in a new way and take that away from me, I struggle a little bit till I got the hang of it. And once I got the hang of it though, I was cutting off limbs and throwing them back at people. You got the, the blue meter on your back that tells you how many psychic throws you got left. And also uh, your spine shows you how much life you have left. Very immersive. That's one of the things that did great. It just creates this very immersive environment where instead of a HUD or a life bar up at the top, it's got, it's got your stuff right on your back there and it shows you how much trouble you're in. 
because you got the futuristic spacesuit. I really love the way they did that. That was great. And then, oh my God, the nursery scene. The nursery scene was difficult to watch. The little baby crawling to the woman and then just exploding everywhere. And then you had to face all the, the evil mutated necro babies. It was, it was horrible, horrible. Crawlers, I think they were called. The creepy, crawly little babies that would crawl up to you and explode. Horrifying creatures. And number one on my list is a game from a franchise I'm very fond of, Resident Evil, of course, but which game? I actually uh, had a lot of trouble deciding which is my favorite Resident Evil game. You got one, the classic, uh, the game that gave me nightmares because my dad rented it from Blockbuster, thinking it'd be a fun thing to do as a family. And then it was horrifying. It had full motion video, <laughs> literal actors sprinting through fields, running from evil undead dogs and then getting into that mansion and then the first zombie you see, it turns around and it's like and it's trying to kill you. And that was horrifying. It gave me, gave me many nightmares. I, I think I slept in my parents' bed one night during that whole fiasco. And then how can you forget two? Two is a classic as well. Running through the streets, trying to get to the police precinct. And then, oh man, just the terror on the second playthrough as Mr. X turns the game upside down for you. Four was amazing, really took the franchise to a whole new level, introduced new enemies. The first time you see one of those tentacles sprout out of someone's head and realize that they're not dead just because their head exploded. That was horrifying, that was a great game. Seven was really good as well. Evil Hillbillies, who saw the game going in that direction? Certainly not me. Uh, so picking just one is very difficult. Uh, I think we're gonna have to go with, look, can, can, I'm gonna make it two. I'm gonna count two and the remake of two as kind of one game with just maybe some remade DLC. Cause man, I really love two and I really love what they did with the remake. It was a blast. And everyone I talk to who plays the game says it's a blast. The way they, oh, spoilers. If you haven't played two, first off, turn this video off, go play uh, Resident Evil 2, the remake. Uh, but the way they have Mr. X up here in the first playthrough, you're going along, you're like, do do do, okay, some of this is a little different, but I mainly get the gist of this. They're not gonna shake things up too much. And then Mr. X is just like, oh, throwing a flaming helicopter. It's like, hi, I'm here on the first playthrough. I'm here to murder you. And then the way he just follows you around relentlessly through that precinct uh, trying to kill you is, is really, really pulse pounding. I love it. You, you, you have to pause. You have to hit pause and look at your map and go, okay, where am I going? Because if I go the wrong way, he's gonna murder me. And then just being able to aim with a mouse and keyboard is something I never knew I wanted so badly in a Resident Evil game. It really is a world of difference. It's so satisfying to be able to aim like that. And you get so much backstory and new umbrella into that game. It's awesome in all the little documents and stuff. It's just a really well done game. Also, as I mentioned, if you watch my Instagram, who designed that police precinct? Uh, the answer to that is it was actually a museum. Uh, that they turned into a police precinct, but that's less fun. I like to imagine it was just designed by a madman who was really at his fingers crossed for a zombie apocalypse and really wanted to make people suffer. Welcome to the Raccoon City Police Department, new guy. Any questions? You just, uh, where's the coffee machine? Yeah, you just head down that hallway and put the three medallions into the base of that statue. Then once the bookcase spins around, you're gonna wanna play the correct notes on the piano. After that, use the heart key you got from the safe on 3B, not the diamond. I'm just gonna go to Starbucks. And that's it, that's my list. Now a lot of people are probably mad right now. They're like, but what about this game that I love? Well, leave it in the comments for me. I'd love to talk about it. I'd love to play it if it's a game I haven't played yet. I'm gonna go through some honorable mentions right now. We've got uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, I know I've hated on it in the past, but those robotic monsters are actually very creepy. And if you're into jump scares, that's the jump scare game. It's the jump scariest jump scare game there is. And really it's, it's the king. And if you're into that kind of game, it's a, it's a phenomenal game. And you got Silent Hill, the Silent Hill series. Nothing from that in this one, I know. Uh, I just never got into that series. I missed one and two. I didn't play those for some reason. And then I tried to get in at Downpour and it just didn't really suck me in uh, the way other games on this list have. If they ever remake uh, the one with Pyramid Head 2, uh, I think I'll probably go back and play that. Or even I'll go back and play one. The Alien Isolation game was great. It took a little too long to get to the actual alien part. For me, I felt like I was playing a while and reading a lot before the alien showed up. And I know that's the criticism of an impatient man and they were world building and whatnot, but I don't know. I just wanted to get into it a little faster. I don't know. Does that make me a bad person? Maybe. Anyway, there's a ton of great horror games out there. Like I said, get in the comments. Tell me your favorites. Tell me what should have made the list and why I would love to hear it. And that's all. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween. I hope you have a, a spooky, but not too spooky, 
Halloween, and uh, I will see you all next time. Bye bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to check out last week's laser corn video, go ahead and click right here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And if you want to see what video YouTube thinks is best for you, you can go ahead and click over here. Kind of a roll of the dice there. All right, see ya.